How much do you love me? I love you according to my duty. Shocked and upset. She had no respect for him. That he started to lose his mind and go crazy. Do you know the stories called, Four Great Tragedies? Hamlet, Othello, King Lear, and Macbeth. Those are very famous stories in the world. But I don't think many people can explain the details very well. Then I'll talk about one of those tragedies, King Lear. King Lear was the king of Britain. He had three daughters. The eldest was named Goneril. The second was named Regan. The youngest daughter, who was her father's favorite, was Cordelia. Goneril was married to the Duke of Albany. Regan was married to the Duke of Cornwall. Cordelia was not yet married, but the King of France wanted to marry her. King Lear was tired and old. He knew that he would probably die soon, and he did not want to rule the kingdom any longer. He decided to let his daughters rule the kingdom. He planned to give the biggest part of the kingdom to the daughter who loved him the most. First, King Lear spoke to Goneril, his eldest daughter. He asked, How much do you love me? Goneril replied, I love you more than words can say. I love you more than the light of my own eyes. I love you more than life. I love you more than liberty. But Goneril was lying, and her words were empty. She was just flattering her father. Old King Lear believed that Goneril was telling the truth, and he was very happy with her answer. He decided to give Goneril and her husband one-third of the kingdom. Then King Lear turned to his second daughter, Regan. How much do you love me? He asked. Regan answered in the same flattering, lying way as Goneril. She said, Father, I love you even more than Goneril does. Your love is my only pleasure in life. Nothing else is important to me. King Lear believed Regan's words. He decided to give Regan and her husband one-third of his kingdom, too. Then King Lear spoke to his youngest daughter, Cordelia, who was his dearest child. He had always loved her the most. He thought that Cordelia would say that she loved him even more than Goneril and Regan. But Cordelia was disgusted with the flattery and lies of her sisters. She knew that their words were empty. They were greedy for power and wealth. So Cordelia only said, I love you according to my duty, neither more nor less. The king was shocked and upset. He thought that Cordelia was being ungrateful and rude. He warned her to think about what she was saying. Be careful, King Lear told her. You will destroy your fortune if you answer me so ungratefully. But Cordelia answered, Father, you have given me life and love, and I love you and obey you and honor you greatly. But I cannot speak like my sisters. I cannot make such big speeches. I must speak the truth. If I ever marry, I must give my husband at least half of my love, my care, and my duty. It would not be honest or right to say that you are the only one I love. In reality, Cordelia loved her father very, very much much more than Goneril or Regan. But after hearing her greedy sister's lies and flattery, she thought that the most honorable thing to do was to love and be silent. She did not want to speak words of love in order to get power and wealth. Old King Lear was very angry. He did not realize that Cordelia's love was true. He decided to punish her. Instead of giving her one-third of the kingdom, he gave her nothing. The old king divided his kingdom between Goneril and Regan and their husbands, the Dukes of Albany and Cornwall. He announced that they would rule over the kingdom. King Lear would keep his kingly title as a mark of respect. He would also keep 100 knights to serve him. As a sign of his royal dignity, but he would no longer rule. King Lear's friends were extremely shocked and sad. They felt that Lear had made a very foolish decision by allowing his daughters to rule the kingdom. They also felt that King Lear had acted cruelly and unwisely by disinheriting Cordelia. 
but they were too scared to do anything or to tell the king their thoughts. The only person who dared to speak to King Lear was the Earl of Kent. The Earl of Kent loved the king deeply and was very loyal to him. He had always served the king faithfully and given him good advice. The Earl of Kent told King Lear that Cordelia truly loved him. He told him that Cordelia was a good and respectful daughter. She was too honest to speak flattering words, Kent said. But her love was deep and real. But King Lear did not want to listen to the Earl of Kent's wise words. Instead he became very angry with Kent, too. He banished the Earl of Kent from his kingdom. King Lear said, you have five days to leave my kingdom. On the sixth day, if you are still in Britain, I will have you killed. Even though he knew that the king was making a mistake, the earl remained an obedient subject. And so the faithful Earl of Kent sadly said goodbye to the king and left the palace. The king of France still wanted to marry Cordelia. He understood that she truly loved her father but could not speak lies or flattery. He knew that Cordelia was honest and honorable, unlike her two sisters. Come to France and be my queen, he said to Cordelia. I will gladly marry you. Cordelia agreed to marry the king of France, but she was still sad to leave her father. She was very worried that Goneril and Regan would treat old King Lear badly. Love our father well, and take good care of him, Cordelia told her sisters. But Goneril and Regan were scornful and did not pay attention. As soon as Cordelia left, Goneril and Regan began to treat their father badly. At first, King Lear was living with Goneril and her husband. But Goneril hated to see King Lear and his 100 knights. She never wanted to see her father or speak to him. When she did speak to him, she was rude. Soon even Goneril's servants began to treat King Lear rudely. At first, King Lear tried not to notice Goneril's rudeness. He did not want to admit that he had been wrong about Goneril's love for him. But slowly he began to realize that Goneril did not love him at all. Meanwhile, the good and faithful Earl of Kent was still hiding in Britain. Even though the king had banished him, Kent had decided to stay. He wanted to help Lear in any way he could. So Kent disguised himself as a humble servant named Keyes. He offered himself to King Lear as a servant. King Lear did not realize that Keyes was actually his faithful friend, the Earl of Kent, and so he accepted Keyes as a servant. Keyes quickly showed his love of King Lear. He served and protected the old king well. He also defended King Lear against the bad treatment of Goneril and her servants. When Goneril's steward was very rude to King Lear, Keyes locked him up. King Lear was very touched by his new servant's loyalty to him. Soon King Lear trusted and loved Keyes. He never guessed that Keyes was actually his old friend, the Earl of Kent. King Lear had one more faithful friend, as well. The court jester, or fool, was kind to him. Occasionally the fool made fun of Lear for giving up his kingdom to his daughters. But mostly, the fool told jokes and sang songs to make Lear feel better. Over time, Goneril treated her father more and more badly. She complained that he should not stay with her. She said that it was too costly to take care of him and his 100 knights. You must get rid of some of your knights, she told King Lear unkindly. You have too many. It costs too much to feed and clothe all of them. King Lear was very surprised to hear Goneril's words. I gave you my crown and my lands, he said. How can be you so ungrateful? But Goneril had no love for her father and no respect for his old age. She continued to complain, and King Lear became angry. He decided to leave Goneril's home and go stay with his second daughter Regan. Goneril's husband, the Duke of Albany, was an honorable man. He felt sorry for the old king. 
The Duke believed that Goneril was treating her father badly. He asked King Lear to stay. But King Lear was too angry to listen. He and his 100 knights left to go to Regan's home. As they traveled, King Lear thought fondly of his daughter Cordelia. He realized that he had treated her badly, and he began to cry. He felt shame for his foolish actions, and he regretted giving Goneril so much power over him. When King Lear got to Regan's home, Regan and her husband, the Duke of Cornwall, refused to greet him. King Lear discovered that the hated Goneril was there. He asked Regan to let him stay with her. He pleaded with her. But Regan told her father that he could not stay with her. She said that he should go home again with Goneril. You should do what Goneril says, Regan told the old king. You should apologize to her. You should give up half of your knights. You are old now, and you need to listen to us. We know better than you, she said disrespectfully. Regan's cold welcome and unkind words made King Lear very sad. I will never go back to Goneril's home, Lear said. I will stay here with my 100 knights. Do not forget. I gave you half of my kingdom. Where is your respect? Where is your gratitude? Where is your love? But Regan had no love for her father. She said, if you stay with me, you can only have 25 knights, not 50. You do not need so many. Poor King Lear was shocked by her unkindness. Then I will go back to Goneril's home, he said. She will let me have 50 knights, not 25, so she must love me twice as much. Then cruel Goneril said, why do you need even 25 knights? Or even 10 knights? Or 5? Why do you need any at all? It costs too much for me to feed and house them. My servants should be enough for you. You do not need your own. Goneril was determined to take away all of her father's dignity. She had no respect for him, and no gratitude for his generosity to her. The selfish cruelty of Goneril and Regan was a shock to poor King Lear. At last he realized that these two daughters did not love him at all. Instead, they were greedy and hungry for power. He had been fooled by their lies and flattery. King Lear became so angry that he started to lose his mind and go crazy. Outside, a terrible storm began. Cold rain fell. Thunder and lightning raged. Even though the weather was awful, King Lear did not want to stay with Goneril or Regan. He preferred being outside in the terrible storm, rather than being inside and suffering his daughter's cruelty. So the old king left Regan's house and went out into the storm. Only the faithful fool and King Lear's servant Keys, who was secretly the Earl of Kent, came with him. After a while, Keys persuaded King Lear to shelter in a small cave, to get away from the storm. In the morning, the Earl of Kent arranged for King Lear to be taken to the castle of Dover, where Kent still had some loyal friends. Those friends would take care of the poor, old, mad king. Lear would be safe in Dover, Kent knew. Then the Earl of Kent decided to leave Britain. He decided to set sail to France. He went to see the King of France and Cordelia, who was now the king's wife. The Earl of Kent told Cordelia how badly her sisters had treated their father. He explained that poor King Lear had lost his mind because of Goneril and Regan's cruelty. He explained that King Lear was alone and powerless, without his friends or his kingdom. Cordelia was very upset to hear about her father. Even though King Lear had been very unkind to her, she still loved him. She could not bear to hear that he was alone and suffering. Cordelia decided to go back to Britain to help him. With the King of France's permission, Cordelia sailed to Britain with the Earl of Kent. She brought the French army with her. Cordelia had a plan. She and her army would fight Goneril and Regan and then restore King Lear to his throne.
soon Cordelia and her army arrived at Dover. After they arrived in Dover, some of Cordelia's soldiers found the old, mad King Lear wandering outside. He had somehow escaped from the castle of Dover, where Kent's friends had been caring for him. By now, King Lear had completely lost his mind. He was singing to himself and wearing a crown made of straw and weeds. Soon the old king was feeling better, thanks to the doctors. Although he was still half mad, he was calmer and less confused. When Cordelia finally saw her beloved father, she hugged and kissed him and asked for his blessing. King Lear was just as happy. He cried with joy to see his darling child. With tears in his eyes, he begged for Cordelia's forgiveness. However, Cordelia told him that there was nothing to forgive. I love you, and I will kiss you to kiss away all of my sister's unkindness, Cordelia said. They should be ashamed of themselves for treating you like that. How could they send their good, kind, old father out into the night and the storm? On such a terrible night, I would not even send my enemy's dog away from my house. Then Cordelia told King Lear that she had come from France to help him. While Cordelia comforted and took care of her poor, half-mad father, her two sisters were still acting in evil ways. Both Goneril and Regan were being unfaithful to their husbands, the Dukes of Albany and of Cornwall. Both sisters had fallen in love with the same man, Edmund. He was the bastard son of the dead Earl of Gloucester. Edmund was an evil man. He hated his brother Edgar, who was the lawful heir and the next Earl of Gloucester. Edmund had plotted to stop Edgar from inheriting their father's title and wealth. Edmund's plot against Edgar had worked, and now he was the Earl. Someday he hoped to be king, too. That was why Edmund had seduced both Goneril and Regan. This evil man was also the commander of Goneril and Regan's army that was marching off to fight Cordelia's army. Around this time, the Duke of Cornwall, Regan's husband, died. Immediately Regan announced that she planned to marry Edmund. When Goneril heard this news, she became very jealous and angry toward her sister. Edmund had made love to both of the sisters and promised to marry each of them. Goneril decided to take revenge on Regan. She secretly put poison into her sister's food, killing her. Unfortunately for Goneril, her evil deed was discovered by her husband, the Duke of Albany. The Duke was a good man. He was very shocked by his wife's actions. As a punishment for murdering her sister, the Duke put Goneril in prison. Full of rage and disappointed love, Goneril soon killed herself. That was the end of these two evil sisters, Regan and Goneril. Tragically, the good and kind Cordelia did not meet a happier end than her cruel sisters. Cordelia's army was fighting the army of Goneril and Regan, which was under the command of Edmund, the bad Earl of Gloucester. Edmund's army won the battle, and Edmund put Cordelia and her father, King Lear, in prison. On Edmund's orders, the innocent Cordelia was murdered in prison. Heartbroken by his daughter's death, old King Lear died soon afterwards. The loyal Earl of Kent, who served the Lear faithfully until his death, also died. Soon afterwards, the evil Edmund was killed by his good brother Edgar. Edgar then became the true Earl of Gloucester. Since King Lear and all three of his daughters were now dead, the Duke of Albany became the next King of Britain. Please subscribe to my channel. We're gonna show you world masterpieces in about 15 minutes with manga. Manga is Japanese style comics that is easy for everyone to understand. We're sure that you can grasp the context shortly. See you next time.